Hey everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome back to another video. We've got a new endoscope here uh, by a company called Clear Clinics, which is a company based in the UK and they sent this to me to try out. So I don't get to keep it unfortunately, but uh, I like having new gear to play with. So uh, I thought I'd test it out on this particular case. And what we have here is an infection of the ear. This is the right, patient's right ear canal. And this infection is not clearing. Um, this is the patient's third week of caniston drops. And then before that, she had a further two weeks with otomize, which is an antibiotic drop. Caniston is antifungal. And uh, nothing's working. So currently, this patient is being managed by myself and the GP. The GP, once the otomize failed to resolve the problem, the GP took a swab and it turned out it was fungal, hence the prescription of caniston. Um, but, and I've seen the patient several times over the last six weeks during this, this kind of saga. And uh, as you can expect, the, the, you know, every week or so, the ear is then just kind of filled with kind of wet, slough, dead skin rubbish and, um, and I have to suction it out. Um, so this is a bit of a mystery and it's looking like an ENT job at this point. Um, I have no idea why nothing's working. We seem to be following the correct protocol for otitis externa, oto ear, itis inflammation, externa, external ear, ear canal. Uh, you know, and the good, the, the kind of correct good practice protocol is you clean the ear out, what we call oral toilet, A-U-R-A-L, oral toilet. Cleaning the ear out, getting rid of as much dead skin, you know, pus, whatever, exudate as, you, as much as you can. And then that paves the way for the medication from the doctor to do its work, to make contact with infected tissue and microorganisms and stuff. And of course, taking away all of this dead skin uh, denies those microorganisms food. So if this was fungal, we're gonna strip all of this dead skin away, or if it was bacterial, we'd strip all this dead skin away. That's less food and less of a nice environment for those microorganisms to live on and multiply and so on and so forth. So, you know, that's why in cases of ear infections, I tend to be quite meticulous with cleaning everything out. So even when it looks relatively clean, most of the time, if you go back in and you just sort of pry around, you will see these large sheets of dead skin come away from the ear canal, which is a good thing to clear away. Um, and again, we're not causing any bleeding or any, any tissue damage. We're just taking away the dead stuff. So um, a word on the endoscope. This is, I have to say, um, I've not been paid to, do, to make this review or anything, and I'm not making any money from it. I have to send the endoscope back shortly. But it is one of the 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 nicest looking endoscopes, as in the visuals that it produces. It's one of the nicest I've ever used. To date, probably the best visuals that I've been able to record. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about it. Let me know in the comment section. To my eye, the image is, is very nice and clear um, and it's nicely illuminated and balanced such that you know, with the other endoscopes, it, it can be a bit of a challenge to, you know, have everything nicely and balanced, uh, in, illuminated in balance such that, you know, a lot of the time the ear canal, parts of it can be in shadow and parts of it can be overexposed, like white. You know, I think in the film trade in the old days, they used to call that burning. But um, it can often be quite difficult to illuminate everything nicely. But in this particular case, everything is really, really super clear. I can, you know, have the exposure settings down on quite minimal settings, which means I have a low ISO rate on the camera. So we don't get a, a grainy image. We get quite a nice sharp image. Um, there is a caveat, however, to that. And that is that the, the rod, you know, the bit that we put in the patient's ear, the rod, the tube, whatever you want to call it, is large. So the diameter of the, the rod is about four millimeters, which doesn't sound like much, but most of the videos that you see on the channel, they're shot with a, an endoscope that has a 2.7 millimeter diameter. So this is quite large in comparison. It's not a deal breaker. You know, you can do most ears with a four mil endoscope. It's just, it's just more, more of a faff. Um, it's more difficult because you've got this big thing in the ear canal and then you have to, you know, find room for your suction probe or tool or whatever. Um, 
but I'm kind of used to it. In fact, if you go back to the very, very first videos that I ever posted on YouTube, like the first 10 videos, something like that, um, that also was a 4mm endoscope. And um, you can you can see the visual difference. You know, the old, old, old videos, despite them being super old, they do look very nice. They do, and that's because more light can physically, you know, enter the, the, the camera sensor. There's, you know, more light reaches the camera sensor, and therefore you can be a bit freer with how you play with the camera settings. Whereas with the, you know, very tiny endoscopes, um, less light reaches the camera sensor, and then you have to compensate for that. So, um, and, and of course, you know, you can't polish or whatever, whatever. So, um, you know, a crummy image will always be crummy despite how, how well you sort of try and sort of like edit it. So just getting rid of this last bit of dead skin here. And it's, it, I mean, it's a fairly good result, I have to say. I mean, ear canal's looking quite clear. Obviously it looks, you know, a little inflamed, um, but that's due to the nature of the infection. Um, you can see throughout the video and particularly here, I've just been altering the focus. The other thing that I, I find hard to explain, but I do get a wider perspective with this endoscope. You know, the field of view is a little bit better. And I like that because it just, it allows you to see things a bit clearer. Uh, eardrum back there, nice and intact. There's a little, you know, globules of dead skin here and there, but otherwise it looks quite healthy to be honest. Just going in, seeing if I can get a little bit more I'm seeing if any of these kind of sheets of dead skin are hiding anywhere, but um, otherwise it looks it looks fairly good. Patient was very very compliant. You know they didn't feel like this was at all painful or anything. It was quite a relief actually for her to get all this dead skin out of the canal. You know because it's not it's not pleasant having all of that wet mush down in there against the eardrum. She does have an underlying hearing loss as well, so this is just compounding the problem. And it's, obviously it's incredibly frustrating if you can't hear out of one ear. And your good ear also has a hearing loss. Um, so uh, we're tr trying to sort her out with hearing aids at the moment, but it's a bit of a challenge. So these are all the kind of sheets of dead skin I pulled away. Well, these are the sheets that didn't suck into the machine. These got stuck on the end of the fine end, which is that little metal bend that you can see there. Um, I decided to put it under the microscope to, to run a KOH test on it. Nothing really interesting happens. Uh, I just thought I would show you what it, what a piece of this dead skin looked like under the microscope, um, because it's always it's it's fun. Why not? Um, that's dark field. So again, it just it just looks like dead skin to be honest. Nothing exciting, you know. No kind of intricate weaves of fungal hyphae here. This is actually before I put the chemicals on the slide. So, but the chemicals on the slide didn't really reveal anything that interesting either way. So, um, so there we go. I hope you found that video entertaining and interesting. If you have any comments, leave them down in the section below. I will try my very best to get back to you. Let me know what you thought about the, the image quality from this endoscope. I'd be really interested to get your feedback. Uh, and of course, I will see you guys on the next video.